Hello friends, in today's video we're going to be continuing our exploration of Kubernetes. We're going to be deploying our .NET Web API into a Kubernetes cluster running locally, which is going to be Minikube. So let's get started. So as we can see here, I have a very simple Web API. And within this Web API, if I open my program.cs, it's a minimal API. I can see here that I have my application. And even here I have my endpoint, which is get weather forecast. And through all of this, basically, this is the only endpoint that I have. It's a very simple API. It's basically out of the box what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna be utilizing this to deploy it i've already created my docker file which is going to be responsible for containerizing this application or the for me to deploy to my kubernetes cluster and it's a very simple implementation for it i have already covered how to do dockerized a.net application in uh, a lot of videos so if you have any questions please make sure you put them in the comments down below so now that we have understood or basically we have the foundation that we're going to be using so the first thing i want to do is i want to dockerize it or create an uh, image of this so i'm going to put docker build dot dash t sample i'm gonna give it version one now we can see it's doing the building and now once it's built it basically gave me that it has been created successfully okay perfect so now what i want to do is i want to run it and the way i do so is i'm gonna put docker let's clear this up docker run i'm gonna specify my ports which is gonna be from 8080 map to port 80 actually let's make it 8080 to 82 and then i'm gonna specify my asp net core urls so asp net core underscore urls equal to http comma and it's gonna be on port 80 and i want to specify the environment asp net core underscore environment equal development and then i need to specify my sample v1 and now we can see my application is running and it's mapped to port 8080 so now if i go to port 8082 that i specified and i go to forward slash swagger and we can see that I have my weather forecast running. Okay, great. If I try it out, execute, we'll be able to see I'm getting the random. Okay, great. So basically this tells me that my application is able to run successfully. So the next step is I want to actually push this into Docker Hub in order for me to be able to actually utilize it inside my Kubernetes cluster. So, so I'm just going to rebuild this by tagging it as Muhammad Lawan forward slash sample v1 and basically i just tagged it with my docker io name so now if i go to docker hub we can see here that my username is muhammad lawan and this is what i want to push so if we go back to my terminal so now if i want to push my image to docker hub all i need to do is put docker push muhammad lawan forward slash sample and it's going to be v1 so now we can see it's actually pushing from my local computer into Docker Hub. And in a few seconds, I should be able to see this inside my Docker Hub. So now if I go back to Docker Hub, let's give it a few seconds. Okay, perfect. Now it's finished from here. If I come here and refresh, we should be able to see that now my container is actually publicly available. Okay, perfect. So now that I have this, now let's go back to my source code. And the first thing I want to do here, I'm going to clear this up. I'm just going to make sure that my Kubernetes, Kubernetes cluster is running. So I'm going to put kubectl, get all. And we can see here that it's not running. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to run Minikube. So I'm going to open a new terminal. That's going to be specifically for Minikube. I'm going to put Minikube start. And now basically we're starting all of the Minikube services. So basically I'm initializing my local Kubernetes cluster. Perfect. Now we can see that Cube City, uh, Minikube is actually running. So if I go back to my terminal and run my command again, cube get kubectl get all. And now we can see here that everything is running. Okay, great. Now that I have done this, the next step is I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it deployment.yaml. So if you don't know what a deployment.yaml is and how does it work, in my last video, I have covered the full step by step of Kubernetes and how does it work, what, what's a deployment, what's a replica set, and how does it uh, convert our container into an actual learning application inside a pod inside Kubernetes. So I highly recommend you watching this um, in order for you to be able to understand what is a deployment. I'll link the video here somewhere so you'll be able to uh, get access to it. But now let's get started with writing a deployment. So we're going to start by specifying my API version. And it's going to be apps forward slash version one. And basically the API version here basically tell Kubernetes what the sets of API that I want to use for my deployment because there's different sets of them. I'm going to specify the kind of this document. I'm going to say it's going to be a deployment. Once I specify the deployment, I'm going to specify my metadata. So now what we want to do is we want to specify the metadata. So we put metadata and now we specify the name for our deployment. I'm going to say sample app deployment. 
then we have to specify our annotation and basically here we're telling kubernetes why are we doing this deployment and here i'm gonna put the change cause so we put kubernetes dot io forward slash change dash cause and here we're gonna say initial deployment perfect so now that we have our metadata we have our annotation now we want to specify the spec for our deployment and basically the spec here will telling them how many pods do i want how many containers do i want to, do I want to run where can it find its image and order for it to create the container etc so this should be very straightforward so first of all i say how many replica set do i want and if you don't know what a replica set we have already covered in the previous video so please make sure you go watch it but basically in essence a replica set is the amount of replication of my current deployment that i want so basically i have one five sets of basically five nodes running then i want to basically specify a label so in case I want to match anything to it so I'm gonna say match labels and here I want to specify the labels name so I put up and I can call it sample dash app and I forgot to add the selector here so let's add a selector and then all of these will be under the selector perfect and now here what I need to do is I specify my template and this template here is gonna be the basically the run book for every single container so it's gonna specify the amount of RAM the resources the container name where it's gonna find the image name sorry where it's gonna find it and all of that so we'll start with the metadata that I want and I'm gonna give it a name I call it sample app I specify the labels that I want to use and this is gonna be my environment so it's gonna be for example dev then the actual app name which is gonna be sample app it has to match whatever I am put it here so sample dash app I'm gonna specify its kubernetes name so app.kubernetes.io forward slash name again sample dash app perfect so now that I have specified my template I'm uh, sorry my metadata now I need to specify the spec and this is gonna be the containers and here we can see the containers name so I'm gonna give it a name of my sample app again but here's gonna be where my image gonna come into place and this is basically where I deployed it to the Azure uh, to the docker hub and as we can see this is my container so what I can do I can I can just copy this and this is gonna be basically the latest version and I'm gonna ha I have version one enabled so I'm just gonna take version one I'm gonna put v1 so now I want to specify my ports and basically we're gonna say container port is gonna be 80 and we're gonna say that this is in order for me to connect it to the web so it's gonna be a service so we're gonna give it a name which is gonna be HTTP HTTP dash web dash service. Then I want to specify here my resources. And here we're going to say it's going to be the requests. I'm going to specify the CPU. I'm going to make it a very small CPU. And then I need to specify my memory. I'm going to make it as 100 MI. Again, it's very, very small, like basically around 100 megabytes. And I want to specify the limits. So if it needs to expand, what's the maximum amount? So I'm going to put CPU. It's going to be 200. And my memory also 200. So now that I have done this, the next step is I want to specify my environment. So I say environment and here I specify my custom environment. So when I run my Docker image, I specified an environment variable. So if we remember from here, let's see it. So we can see here, I have defined my environment variable, which is the ASP.NET URLs and the environment here. So we need to specify the same thing. So the first one is going to be name, and this is going to be ASP.NET core underscore URLs and the value is going to be HTTP forward slash forward slash plus port 80. Okay, perfect. So now that I have done this, now what happened if I want to create my pod? So I'm just going to clear this up. So if in order for me, to actually initiate this uh, deployment i need to utilize kubectl so i put kubectl but just as an fii this will fail uh, basically i will not be able to connect to it and will explain to it why so kubectl i'm gonna put apply dash f and here i'm gonna specify my deployment dot yaml and we're gonna run this okay let's make sure that i have the right annotations and i think this is my problem i forgot the s inside the annotations so i'm just gonna add an s here and try again and as we can see here deployment apps has been created so now if i clear this up and put an add queue ctl pods get pods and as we can see here i have my pods up and running and basically i have five of them and we can see they are still being created get pods again we can see three of them are running the other one are still and now we can see all of them are running but with that still i still cannot even access them i know although i have all of my pods uh, of my application running but i still not able to access them because there's no way i'll be able to connect through the kubernetes cluster and that has a very easy fix what i need to do is i need to create a service which is going to connect to this port that i have here so let's see how we can do that so here at the end of this document what i need to add actually before we do this let us delete the deployment so i'm going to put cube actually let's clear this up clear we put cube ctl delete and we're gonna put forward slash f deployment.yaml and now we can see it's deleted so if i put again q 
cube ctl cat pods we can see that everything is gone and we only have the engine axe which i created previously available okay great so now how can i solve the problem of me not able to connect to this P pretty straightforward so all i'm gonna be doing here is i'm gonna be adding a new functionality which is gonna be a service so i'm gonna put api version 1 v1 and then i want to specify here the types or the kind i'm gonna put it's gonna be of service then i need to specify my metadata as we did previously and i'm gonna specify name i'm gonna call it my load balancer service then i need to specify my specs for this load balancer and i'm gonna say it's gonna utilize a selector and the selector is gonna be app dot kubernetes.name.io and this is going to be the same name as the one i specified previously which is going to be sample app these needs to match or else kubernetes will not be able to find which app it needs to connect to and then i need to specify the ports for this service and i'm going to specify the names i'm going to call it sample uh, port and then i need to specify the protocol which is going to be over tcp i'm going to specify the port number that i want to connect to which is going to be let's say 8082 and the target port for my application is going to be port 80 and lastly i need to specify the type which is going to be of type load balancer of this service now if we try to run load balancer so now if we try to run it again so put cube ctl apply dash f deployment.yaml we can see now two services has been created my application as well as my load balancer so this has been a quick introduction of how you can actually deploy your .NET application to kubernetes i hope this video was helpful if you have any questions please make sure you put them in the comments down below if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon or buying me a coffee with that said thank you very much for watching and have a great day